I was actually surprised that this tip was only on one person's list because I think it is probably the most important tip for your health overall, regardless of keto or low carb or how you're eating. I think this tip is probably the single most important one. I was just surprised that this one did not make more people's list. Want a simple way to cut carbs without complicated meal prep? Grab our free Fast Start to Keto kit today. Hey guys, it's Rebecca here with Keto Sisters. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day. So today we are continuing our series on the things that I ask your Keto Sisters dream team. Like, what are your good tips and tricks? What are the things that if you were telling someone, hey, do this for keto, do this for low carb, do this for your good health, what are those things? So I've shared a lot of tips over the last couple of weeks. So if you've missed any of those episodes, you can go to our YouTube channel and there'll be a whole series. I was actually surprised that it was only on one person's list because I think it is probably the most important tip. Now they gave us a lot of great tips. And I mean, I agreed with everything they added. I was just surprised that this one did not make more people's list. Now that being said, it's not one that people necessarily associate with keto because this is a tip that applies to you regardless of the way that you're eating or the way that you're moving your body. It affects everybody and that's why in my opinion it's probably the ultimate weapon in your arsenal of things that you're using, tools, tips, strategies that you're using to live your best life. What is it? Any guesses? I'll be looking at the comments to see if you have any guesses but I can't keep it in any longer. It's sleep. Adequate, good quality sleep. Because without that, I don't care how perfect your diet is, how many times you exercise, how much you work on your attitude. None of that to me is really going to matter worth anything, even hydration, which I think is also extremely important. If you're not doing this and making sleep a priority, you're simply not going to be thriving. There's just no way. Now, there may be seasons. There may be times when maybe your sleep is less than ideal. You know, maybe it's, you're going through a stressful thing like moving or divorce or job loss or health problems or problems with your kids or loved ones. There can be seasons when sleep is more of a challenge for us, but I think it's important to make sleep a priority every day. And especially when you're having a challenging season, it's even more important to make sleep a priority. Why do I think that sleep is so important? First of all, it gives you a mental rest. And who doesn't need a mental rest, right? It's when your brain can shut down and just do like the automatic things, but it's not running in a million different directions. That is when your body also rests and repairs itself. Can you imagine a car engine going all the time, never getting a tune up, never getting to idle, never getting to turn off? You can see that that might not be the best for the longevity and the performance of that machine. Your body is a machine. It needs rest. It needs a chance to repair. There is evidence that sleep can help reduce your stress and your cortisol levels. So if you aren't familiar with cortisol, it's a response to stress. Your cortisol levels will rise. Like say I was being chased by a bear. My cortisol level rise, right? My adrenaline kicks in. I've got energy and I need to burn that off to run away from the bear. What happens in our society, we aren't usually running away from predators. A lot of our stress is emotional, it's mental. And so we get that rise in cortisol, but we never burn it off. Sleep is a great way to kind of let your body reset, to release some of that stress and therefore keep your cortisol levels from rising or from staying raised. And cortisol, when it stays raised for a long time, there's evidence that it actually encourages your body to store fat, okay, which is not what most of us are wanting to do. So sleep's important to give your body a rest, to give your mind a rest, to let your body do repairs. It can also very easily help you extend your fasting window. What does that mean? Most of us don't eat while we're sleeping. Unless you're a sleepwalker and a sleep eater, you're fasting. You're in a fasted state because you're not eating. If you're getting adequate sleep, that is naturally going to extend your fasting window. And so that has a ton of benefits. We have a whole series on our YouTube channel about the benefits of fasting and extending that fast. And a really easy way to do that is to get more sleep. So whenever I'm trying to do an extended fast, so maybe quarterly or so, I try to push myself to a 60 hour fast. I can't say I enjoy it. I know the benefits are great, but it's a struggle. I daily do intermittent fasting. A lot of times I do one meal a day. I can do a 24 hour fast really easily. That's not a problem at all, but those extended fasts are harder. So what happens is at night during my extended fasts, sometimes I'll just look at my husband and be like, let's just go to bed. 
because all I can think about is eating and having a snack while we watch TV. So I'll just go to bed. I'll get a little extra sleep and I keep my fasting going. It's a great way to extend your fast. This pretty much goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. If you get good rest at night, you're probably going to be less tired the next day. So on days when I'm like stressed and I can't quite get my mind to shut off and so I'm not getting good sleep, maybe I wake up in the middle of the night worried about something, the next day my mental and physical performance, they suffer. I feel groggy. I feel just lousy. So sleeping well one night is going to make the next day better. And when you're well rested, when you're not tired, do you see how much easier it is to make yourself exercise? and to make better choices as far as what you're eating. If you didn't get great sleep, maybe you only got two or three hours sleep and maybe it was really a fitful sleep and you were really restless, you're tired the next day. What do we do when we're tired? We look for a pick-me-up. We hit the vending machine. We hit the drive-through. We go get a really sugar-laden coffee drink. We're trying to give ourselves energy to kind of pep us up because we didn't naturally rest and reset overnight. So poor sleep, tends to lead to poor decisions the next day as far as what you eat. Also, if you didn't get good rest the night before, it's a lot easier to say, oh, I'm going to skip the gym. I'm not going to go on my nightly walk. I'm so tired. It's easy to make movement not a priority. Not getting sleep one night, not only does it affect you that night, but it has repercussions the following day. Having great sleep tends to improve our mood. I know that I'm a lot more grouchy when I haven't had good sleep. So having good sleep, that's just more pleasant for you and for everyone around you. And there's also evidence that getting good restful sleep can actually improve your digestive function and your immune function. So those are things that a lot of people really struggle with today. And I think it goes hand in hand. People aren't sleeping well, people aren't eating well, people aren't moving well, people are having problems with digestion, people are having immune issues. I mean, how many people do you know, or maybe you yourself have autoimmune conditions? To me, all of this is interrelated because we are a very complex body and everything that we do affects everything that we do. If you're not hydrated, your physical and mental cognitive function, that will be impaired. And if you're not sleeping well, it's the same thing. If you're not fueling yourself well, same thing. The more you can take care of your body with good sleep, good hydration, good stress management, good food choices, good movement choices, all of those things will lead to a better result, which is not only longevity, but also better quality of life. I don't want to live until I'm 90 and be miserable and have horrible health. Like I want to live full throttle and then I just want to keel over, right? When it's my time to go, I'm just ready to go. I don't want to just hang around and be miserable in my body and my mind. So everything that you can do to take care of yourself now will help you live longer and live better and sleep is so crucial. So you might be going, yeah, I know. I know, Rebecca, I know sleep's important, but when it's four o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep, what do I do? I've got you. I made a list of several strategies and tips that you can employ to make sure that you are more consistently getting good quality sleep and an adequate quantity of sleep. One thing that you might wanna do is avoid caffeine or limit it to the morning, especially if you're sensitive. Caffeine doesn't really affect me, super strongly. So I can drink a caffeinated beverage and go to bed in an hour if it's time for me to go to bed. But if you know that you're sensitive to that, maybe cutting it off early in the morning. Also having a regular waking and sleeping schedule is key. We are creatures of habit. So it's much easier if you get up and go to bed at the same time every day. And so while it might be really tempting to sleep your weekend away, I think you'll find overall, you'll be more rested throughout the week if you go to bed and get up about the same time every day. You also want to eat well. I've already mentioned this today. Eating well and hydrating well, that primes your body for a better existence. And a better existence includes being able to sleep better. If you're eating a lot of high carb, highly processed foods, I like to call it garbage, that's not good for you. And your body struggles to handle it. Like you're eating something with a lot of preservatives. Your body doesn't recognize those substances as food. And so it's really struggling with what to do with it. And so that can make sleep a challenge. So the better you eat and hydrate the body, the better able you will be to get good quality sleep. So along those lines, not only just good quality choices on your eating and your drinking, but also the timing of that. You don't want to eat or drink a lot right before bedtime. It can be hard for you to digest. You're lying down and your body wants to focus on digesting, but you also are trying to sleep. And if you drink a lot of liquids before you go to bed, 
you're probably going to be getting up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom and then you've got to fall back asleep. So you're just interrupting your sleep pattern. So cutting off your eating and your drinking earlier in the evening can be helpful. And that can also be a good way to keep from snacking at night when you don't need to snack. One tip that I love to give people, and it seems so silly, is to brush your teeth when you're finished eating for the day. You don't have to wait until right before you go to bed to brush. You can brush again right before bed if you want. But go ahead, signal to your body and your brain, brushing my teeth, I'm done eating for the day. Once you've got that minty, fresh, clean feeling in your mouth, you're not thinking about eating anymore. It's a nice mental cue, physical cue. We're done eating for the day. Also, you want to make sure you have a great, comfortable environment for sleeping. So you might want to invest in room darkening shades or blinds. I think generally most people sleep better in a cooler environment. If my husband watches this, he's going to make fun of me. Because when I go to bed, I tend to be chilly and I want to get in bed with my socks and I want to load up in blankets and I just want to get really cozy and snuggle in. And two hours later, I'm sweating. I'm having nightmares. I always have nightmares when I get too hot. And so my husband, every night when we go to bed, he's like, you're going to be sorry. <laughs> you're going to be sorry. Don't pull that extra blanket up. You don't need it. Just allow yourself to kind of warm up. You don't need it. And he's right. I hate to admit it, but he's right. So a cooler envi environment and a darker environment. Related to a darker environment, having your phone in bed with you is not a great idea. You pick it up, you're scrolling, you've got all that light that's telling you, hey, it's daytime, it's time to be awake. I know some people like to use their cell phone as an alarm clock, but you can get a really inexpensive alarm clock that is not going to tempt you to pick it up and start scrolling if you happen to wake up in the middle of the night. Having a television in your bedroom is not always a good idea because you want your bedroom to be a sanctuary, a place for sleep and relaxation, not watching the nightly news, not watching the latest crime thriller, having things like that with the light and the sounds and the bad news or the bad things that you could be viewing, those are not conducive to a peaceful sleep. Maybe banishing screens from your bedroom is something that you need to do, especially if you know that you struggle with sleep. Limiting your screen time before bed, maybe switching to some soft lighting, soft music, maybe you want to take a bubble bath, read a book, just kind of winding down gradually instead of being overstimulated by screens, whether it's your tablet or your phone or the television, you're really stimulated by the lights and the sounds and the content, and then trying to just shut that off and go to sleep. It doesn't always work so well. So limiting your screen time, keeping your bedroom as a sanctuary. And this one, this one was hard for me to wrap my head around. I want you to invest in a good quality mattress and a good quality pillow. Now I tend to be extremely frugal. And when I saw how much fancy mattresses cost and fancy pillows, I'm like, that's ridiculous. I cannot possibly spend that. That's crazy. But I want you to do what I did. Think about how many hours you spend in that bed. Every day, every night, you're in that bed for hours and hours and hours. And we've already talked about how important that sleep is for your mind and your body and how much it will affect the next day as far as did you get enough sleep? Was it good quality sleep? So yes, invest in a good mattress and a good pillow. It will be worth it. It is going to provide so many dividends on a daily basis. Also splurge on some good sheets. We had just changed our sheets yesterday and both of us when we got in bed were like, oh, these sheets are so soft. It's so nice. It's so cozy. Like get the soft sheets. Don't, don't be cheap on your sheets. Don't get the itchy, scratchy, stiff sheets. Get those soft, luxurious sheets that make you want to curl up in bed and go to sleep. So investing in good quality bedding and good mattresses and in good pillows. My husband finally got me like a really, really nice pillow. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know how much those cost. How could you do that? He's like, you've complained for years about your pillow and you've tried all these different store brands and none of them have satisfied you. So try a good one. Not too many weeks later, he decided to get the same one because he's like, oh, you keep raving about your pillow. I need it too. Even if you're frugal, it's such an investment in your health and in your well being, your happiness. To have your bed and your bedroom be a pleasant place to be. That's going to give you great sleep. And that's actually an investment in your health. It's not just something that's frivolous. Okay. Something else is that you really want to have a plan for managing your stress. If you go to bed and you're stressed and you're thinking about everything you need to do the next day and things are weighing on you, it's probably not going to go well. Doing some light yoga before bed or some light reading, playing some soft music, maybe sitting before a fireplace or just dimming your lights. Those are things that can kind of get your mind and body ready for bed 
and help you manage your stress. And we get that cortisol level down. We get that stress level down. It's much easier to fall asleep and to stay asleep. We do a brain dump, making a great to-do list for tomorrow so that everything is down and you don't have to feel like you have to keep it all in your head. Go ahead and write it down. Then engage in some gratitude, prayer, if that's an important part of your life. I think that's an awesome way to end your day. Getting your mind in a very positive place instead of a very worried or an anxious state. Now, along those lines, if you're like me and you get in bed and then even if you've done a brain dump and you've done your to-do list for tomorrow, you start thinking about things. I keep in my nightstand a pen and just these little index cards. I tend to buy the colored ones just because I think they're prettier. So if I think of something in the middle of the night and, you know, you get that feeling, you're like, oh, I forgot so-and-so's birthday, whatever it is, have something that you can just write it down and then you set it aside so you're not trying to remember it because if you're trying to remember things, you're going to stay awake. So just have a way that you can just write it down and put it, put it away. You can pick that up in the morning. Something that you may be leaning toward because you think it helps your sleep might actually be hurting your sleep. A lot of people think, oh, I want a cocktail or a glass of wine that really helps me wind down. It may actually be making it harder for you to stay asleep. Even though you might get a sleepy kind of relaxed feeling, it might actually be hurting your sleep overall. If you like to enjoy a nightly cocktail or a glass of wine, it might be worth it for you to keep a sleep journal. Just like we've encouraged you to keep a food journal, keeping a sleep journal can help you identify, did that glass of wine really help me go to sleep and stay asleep? Or am I noticing that on the nights that I have some alcohol that I'm waking up in the middle of the night? Maybe it's just making you wake up because it's extra liquid and you've got to go to the bathroom. But at any rate, keeping track of that with a sleep journal or a sleep diary might help you identify things that aren't really contributing to a good sleep. Share in the comments whether you struggle with sleep, what you found that helps with your sleep, and what of these strategies that we've mentioned that maybe you'd like to try. All right, go create your best life. We hope you enjoyed watching that video as much as we enjoyed making it. 